Jackie, where have you been? Jacking off. As you most likely have known for a while now, Adobe Flash and its web player has been obsoleted as of the beginning of 2021, to many's dismay. Because of that, before it got removed for good across the internet, I decided to go on a nostalgia trip of my own before I presumably lost the chance to do so. While looking around at the old sites I used to visit when I was younger, I came across a series of games I had completely forgotten about until this very moment. Adult Swim's catalog. No, not that one. I'm talking about the ones everyone seems to have forgotten. They're Flash games. That's right, Adult Swim used to make their own, original Flash games and release them for free for anyone to play. That's not to say they don't make good games anymore, quite the opposite actually. But these older Flash games were so far out there in comparison to what they make nowadays. However, I ran into a problem while looking for them. Since I first played them almost a decade ago, the website I used to use, the official Adult Swim one, has been updated since then, deleting practically all of their games before 2015. I also could not find the games I remembered on more popular, still-maintained websites like Congregate and Armor Games. To my knowledge, all of their back catalog was completely erased, before I could even get to it. However, in a stroke of luck, Adult Swim posted all of their games to Newgrounds, who has, in preparation for 2021, created their own custom launcher for all the .sfw content on their website. <laughs> There's 22 games on their Newgrounds. I played them all to show you what Adult Swim was up to in the early 2010s. So, without further ado, here's in no particular order. Kill yourself. It'll only take a minute. And you'll be happy that you did it. Just go over to your oven and shove your head in it. Man, really starting this video off strong with a title like that, aren't we? Five Minutes to Kill Yourself is a game where you play as an office worker who says he wants to kill himself if he gets one more meeting request. Then violent shenanigans ensue. <laughs> to be completely real though, for being the first game released by AS, this one is pretty great. You pretty much just pick your totally unique and quirky office suit from several different options, then wander around the office looking for all the ways you can fuck yourself up. And there are so many ways to kill yourself in this game. My personal favorites are the Paper Shredder, Package Sorter, and the Pinata Costume. But even I didn't find the ways to hurt yourself during the time I played this, since there are lots of item combos and areas that I could barely find. Also, there's subtle references to other Adult Swim content to be found here. If you have a few minutes to kill, I'd recommend trying it out, and if you like this one, I remember this being a series of games. Including one at a wedding, and I think a Christmas version as well, but who knows, I could just be bullshitting since no nothing of these two exist anymore. <laughs> Anyways, good game, moving on. This game is a pretty basic puzzle game. All you do is just spin the platforms to make your green dude make it to the end while avoiding the blue devil looking things, I don't know. It's not bad, but overall it's just kind of lackluster, and really easy if you like these kind of puzzles. If those random lemons were collectibles, it might be a bit better to give you something to work towards, but for some reason they're just sort of there. I don't know, you can see me clicking on it right now, they don't do anything. Also, I'm not really sure about the name. Like, there's lots of twirl. Not so much hurl. Oh, there it is on the title screen, wonderful. Music is fucking awesome though. If you like pipe puzzles that require active play, give this one a try. Otherwise, you aren't missing much, to be honest, don't worry. I don't deserve you. You should be with a real girl. Who are you? I am from ancient Rome. All the details. Her people are drunk, violent, and perverse. A new emperor has arisen. He is Rome incarnate. His destiny is to unite the people against you. In Viva Caligula, you take control of Emperor Caligula on a quest to single-handedly fucking slaughter the entirety of Rome. Who does he think he is, Chin? To do this, he starts with a dagger, and he picks up a couple more weapons along the way. A lot more, actually, enough to fill the entire keyboard with commands. And the game pulls it off way better than it has any right to. You see, every single weapon is assigned a key based on its first letter, 
D for dagger, F for flambeau, U for U I R L, etc. This pretty much just gives you access to all of your weapons at once. And without even scratching the surface of this game, you'll fucking need them. Since the people act very randomly, with some running, others confronting you, and the rest tucking shitty. Okay, most tucking shitty. You fuck off! With all those arms, you must indiscriminately kill everyone in your path. Man, woman, rich, poor, hermaphrodite. The more you kill without missing or getting hit, the more points you get, and the more your rage meter fills. When Caligula is rampaging, all of his attacks deal more damage and will give enemies when killed, giving more points and splattering blood all over your screen. Here, here, let me get that for you. Alternatively, this game allows you to use your microphone to fill your rage meter instead. So instead of combos and food, you become a chimpanzee. Did I do this? No. Why? Because I'm not a fucking ape. Even though I am wearing this fursuit, I only use it to finger people to death. Overall, this game is one of the best in my opinion. It's fun, handles well, action's great, gory as hell, gives you an excuse to scream in real life. Highly recommended. This game. Oh man, this game is great. It sucks. With a capital, suck you. <laughs> Basically, you're a whore in the middle of the boonies, as well as a zombie apocalypse who's afraid of losing their johns to the horde. So she sets out in her best zombie fighting attire, consisting of heels and fishnets, to rescue the johns and bring them to her many trailers, apparently. The game is Viva Caligula. No, it's seriously, it's the same fucking game, just monumentally worse and less fun. There are limited weapons and they are all practically useless aside from the Molotovs. The enemies take way too many hits and hurt you just by walking into you, because that's fair. The Johns are worthless sacks of shit and die in a single hit before you can even get to them most of the time. And the controls are poopy as hell. Interestingly enough, this is one of the only two games to get a separate Christmas edition because hookers are so fucking holly jolly, right? Also, I'm not gonna play the Christmas games. I, there's just no point. It's the same fucking game, just with everyone's wearing Christmas hats or something. Just play Viva Caligula. It's a straight upgrade in every way. I'm the boss. Okay, so take us through a day in the life of the boss. Well, the first thing I do is kill that nigga. Imagine if to get a promotion in your job, you had to beat the shit out of and fucking kill all of your competitors in other companies before they do the same to you. That's pretty much the plot of H Charm again. You assemble your team of office workers made up of managers, receptionists, redditors, and salesmen to defeat the other team in a Heroes of Might and Magic like battle system. Each of them have their own abilities, with the managers being healers and support, receptionists as rangers, level 90 wizards being themselves, and salesmen being banned from being within 100 meters of the playground. I mean berserkers. There's actually a surprising amount of depth in this game to be quite honest. Throughout the arena, there are cubicles you must hold by sending a unit to claim them, and whoever holds the most at the end wins. Claiming more cubicles, however, also gives a bonus to your unit's offensive and defensive ability, making you more effective at taking down enemy units while you hold more land and vice versa, forming a much more control-based and strategic game than you might first think. Pairing this with your unit's abilities, like the salesman abilities to go into a rage when at low health, or the Discord admin server crash attack to lower your enemy's attack even further, is necessary to beat your opponent. Furthermore, there are also special items and areas in the game that grant bonuses like healing and damage, but I, I didn't pick those up because I didn't really fucking care. Like, I, I just want to kill the guy. I just want to fucking kill the guy. The only issue with this game, really, is the replay value. After the first win, you can pretty much win every single time after that just as easily. Since the AI's team choice is total dog shit 9 times out of 10. Like, why are you picking three managers? What are you, a fucking noob, dude? Overall, really good strategy game. Play it. <laughs> This game is just fucking annoying, gotta be honest here. So it's a blue guy who shaves hair to grow his own mullet because his family died. That's it, like there's no content to be found here, I mean. The annoying part of this game is the game itself. You're supposed to shave everything on the screen as fast as you can to survive, without shaving them again and giving them a Colombian necktie. The longer you survive, the more points you get. Letting them move off the screen or killing them lowers your time. That's it. But the game does so much shit to you to intentionally try to make you lose. For example, look at this. Or this. 
Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? I'm not a fucking Tass, I'm a normal goddamn Bobot. The dying off screen thing was funny the first time, but that gets old real fast. Overall, it's really uninteresting and more frustrating than fun most of the time. Also, Mr. Mullet's family is most likely alive. He just sold them on Wayfair to buy more hairspray. And the game emits a sound while you play that probably gave me tinnitus. This game's dumb, don't play it. Fucking slaves, get your ass back here! Fuck you! I have mixed feelings about this game. You play as BDSM enthusiasts Sadie and Max on the quest to attain the ultimate climax from the King and Queen of Kink by fighting through their special guests, the Pleasure Bots. But be careful, there is no safe word in this dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. At first, it seems like a spoof of Castlevania. You use your whip to kill enemies, break walls and cages for health and power-ups, and try to beat the boss at the end of every level. Standard stuff. But what the fuck? How do you jump? How do you- Oh, oh it's up. On the arrow keys. Well, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, the real killer here are the controls. They are completely counterintuitive to what you might expect, and you can't remap them. Generally, Flash games attempt to emulate a classic controller style as best they can. In this case, an SNES controller. But instead of having left-right move and a couple other keys do actions like jump and attack, they spread them out across the keyboard, making it really confusing to handle. For example, on PC, having spacebar to jump is very common. But this game decided to make it attack, making you press the spacebar expecting to jump, or you really just whip and fall to whatever you're trying to jump over. It's shit like this that led me to start cheesing the levels. Another thing they had going for it, that they fucked up, were the special weapons. The weapons themselves are great. You have the feather, which lets you fly infinitely, the candle, which is a projectile, the vibrator, which is like a grenade, the taser that damages all enemies in an area of effect, and the cat of nine tails, that's like a whip upgrade. The animations are funny, and the effects are very helpful in every single situation. How'd they fuck that up? By removing the equipped special every single hit. Yup, take five hits and the rest of your life is basically gone. Unfortunately, you'll be picking up so many anal, anal beads that you can't game over. So you're sort of stuck here now, and what the fuck is wrong with you? Why would you put enemies in the wall? The worst part about Dungeons and Dungeons is the waste of potential. Polish it out and you have an excellent platform parody. The characters are great, the art style is well done, and the humor is spot on. But as it stands, it's too frustrating to enjoy due to some of the fatal design flaws in the actual game itself. Fuck you, you dumb bitch! Oh, and I'm dead now. Great. Next! Please give me a whole tray of peas. Thank you. Devour. Devour. This one is decent. You play as a lunch lady giving school children their gruel, like in Diner Dash. You lead the kids to the table by the hand and wait on them hand and foot, because that totally happens in the setting. Man, could she get, like, at least some help? Another worker? Dishwasher? Fucking Roomba or something? Christ. Stop sucking! If you take too long, they start getting rowdy and beating the shit out of each other and stabbing each other until there's only blood left. What a strange design choice in a schoolyard setting. Very odd. Very odd choice indeed. Eventually, you start having to manage more things at once, like multiple slop colors and different sized groups. But overall, it remains pretty easy so long as you stay on top of everything. I unfortunately couldn't get to the part where pornography becomes involved in the game. I was... I wanted that. If you have the real Dino Dash, just play that. Otherwise, this one isn't too bad. Oh yeah, here's a tip free of charge. Murderers like meat in their mouth. No shoes, no shirt. No shoes, you didn't hear that. Remember back when you were a kid, and you would spend whole summers just finding dead bodies in the woods and pushing them down the river, laughing and high-fiving with your friends? It's time you get that feeling back. Floater lets you relive the magic of sending some unfortunate drifter down the great river one last time, as you poke and prod him through the rapids into one final waterfall of memories. <laughs> Lovely. Just pure fucking poetry that right there is. So yeah, that sums up the game better than I could have, honestly. You just shove this sad sack of shit down a river with a stick, shoving them to logs, rocks, angry wildlife, gas canisters that light the body on fucking fire. 
Jeez, it's a bit much, don't you think? Pretty funny game, though, all things considered. The music cracks my shit up because it's all like, Yeah, Ray Thornton's found a body, man! Let's shove that dead son of a bitch down the goddamn bogey! Yeah. Floater's pretty ridiculous, but it's really fun for what it is. I'd try it at least once. I am a dwarf and a digging a hole. Diggy, diggy hole. Diggy, diggy hole. The first of the 8 bit rejects collection. Mountain Miner is a retro-styled game where you play as some crazy fuck on a mountain, lobbing boulders down to the town below. Why? Fucked if I know. Probably something about a helicopter or something, I don't know. As the boulder travels, you have to veer it towards anything and anyone in its path to cause as much devastation as possible heading down the side and finally crushing as many buildings as you can before coming to a halt. There's some things to help you like dynamite hidden in buildings or animal nests that can launch you faster down to the bottom. But most things just exist to make sure you don't meet your quota for the day and get you fired from your job as a professional nutcase. The worst one by far is this dick face that crushes your rock instantly and then comes up and tries to kill you. Like what the fuck dude, it often doesn't concern you that much if you can still climb up to huck shit at me you piece of shit. After each level there's a sequence where local law enforcement tries to take you down. Depending on the size of the town, it could range from park rangers to localized airstrikes. Furthermore, after the first level, SWAT units start scaling the building to assault you if you don't crush them before you run out of boulders. These aren't too big of a deal, just throw everyone off, survive to the end, make it through. The biggest complaint I have is that crushing the buildings is way too frustrating later on in the game. Since most buildings start taking multiple hits to destroy and slow you to a crawl, making further destruction difficult. Even though I'd say this is the worst of the 8-bit rejects, this one is still pretty good. Oh, I'm telling you to use that thinking thought brain of yours, Ross, the big boy brain that plans out all the uh, pictures you're going to jack off to a toddler's on the internet. An endless runner where you have to flex your big brain to make yourself survive longer. This one is more luck-based than knowledge-based, though, sad to say. The reason this game isn't worth playing, in my opinion, is the fact that your success relies solely on the letters you get. And the game really loves the letters S and E. Most of the time, you're going to be just waiting for the singular letter that you need to survive 5 seconds longer until you need the next letter the game refuses to give you. There are backspace power-ups in case you make a mistake, so that's pretty cool. At least it would be if it didn't break your fucking multiplier and make the game even harder. If you like word games, this is not for you. Just stick to Bookworm instead. Art, can I get some change for the candy machine? Oh, here! <laughs> Hey, there's some quarters in here. This game makes me want to become a vending machine champ IRL, if you know what I mean. So, you know that thing on the side of every vending machine that shows that dickhead shaking the machine until it falls on his dumb ass? Well, this is, this is what that game is based off of. Not kidding. You just wail on this poor vending machine until it gives you your bag of lays or your fucking Milky Way or whatever bullshit you're buying. All the game is, is just timing your first hit that makes the machine start wobbling about like a weevil. Then clicking on each target that pops up as fast as you can. Then timing another hit, so you can punch the machine just as it starts falling towards you but not far enough that it'll fall. It's absurdly easy. But the game doesn't explain any of this, so you just feel like a retard, mash clicking until you eventually figure it out through dumb luck. After that though, you can do it easily every single time without fail. Just don't bother playing this one, it's not worth the time at all. It's a Streets of Rage or Double Dragon type game based in the Arctic. You play as a polar bear whose habitat is contaminated and decides to take out on some nearby seal hunters, who club seals with snow shovels and ice picks. Sweet. Out of all the Adult Swim games, I'd say this is the most comedic besides 5 minutes to kill yourself. The enemies are pretty ridiculous, and the baby seals that follow you around got a full-fledged laugh out of me several times while I was recording. It's a shame that, like a lot of other games, the gameplay really hampers the... The gameplay really hampers the enjoyment factor of this one. I swear, I don't mean to sound like a broken record here, it's just that there are such severe flaws in the gameplay of some of these games, I can't ignore it even when I try. With this one, the basic commands are okay. Attacking and moving works totally fine in most situations, and picking up weapons is responsive, and all of them are straight upgrades. The worst of it comes in level 2, when ranged enemies and healing begins to play a huge part of the game. 
So normally in this game, you and the enemy have to be on the same plane to attack one another. It doesn't always work, but it's usually okay to deal with. Ranged weapons don't follow this rule. As long as your sprite is in front of the enemy, no matter how much it may be, you are getting hit. So take this right here, look at this. There's absolutely no safe place to stand. You'll just be eating hits until you can take them out. So eventually you'll need to heal. How do you do that? Pickups? Nah, too easy. You have to land the killing blow with a bite attack. A very weak attack, mind you. And then without letting go of the button, suck on the guy's skull for a full 5 seconds. Getting attacked cancels this out, so healing a fight is totally impossible. And it doesn't even heal 3 hits worth of health. So you really will never be in a good place health-wise. Oh, also, there's a rage mechanic that doesn't work. Like, it doesn't activate, this is me trying to proc it. Fuck you. It's another case of good idea, terrible decisions. If you think you can do better, be my guest. But take this video as a warning. You won't. Here's a fun fact. I've made myself a fursona. That's right. A fursona. He's a buff dare that likes hard rock and neurotoxins. This one, there really isn't much to talk about, but I highly recommend playing it because this is one of the few games that could be a full-fledged purchase. The second of the 8-bit rejects, you play as a robot who has to try to escape this facility by platforming and grappling and avoiding death blocks and blades. It's simple, but the style of execution is what makes this game stand out. The graphics are stylish and colorful, the music is great, the controls are fluid and very responsive. The voice that taunts you is pretty funny and sounds cool as shit. And the game throws you back into the action nearly immediately. Only one problem, you probably didn't notice it yet. But this footage has actually been zoomed in on. This is what it looks like when you actually play it, at least on the Newgrounds player. But if you can deal with that, fucking play this game. Like right now, go. This is by far the strangest game out of the bunch. Hot Throttle is the last game released by Adult Swim, all the way back in 2013. This is also around the time that Adult Swim first aired Rick and Morty, and I really think this game was based heavily off that show. Like if this was a skit put in Rick and Morty, it would fit completely in tune, graphics and all. The premise behind this one is that you're a guy who dreams of being a car, to the point where he pretends to be one literally all the time and joined a race with other dudes who also wish to be cars, to see who is the best car. Also they're all naked. Despite the whole, this, this is actually a really good racing game. It plays sort of like a top down Mario Kart, just with a huge emphasis on acceleration and speed maintenance. As your guy starts running, he slowly starts to crawl towards the ground, or as the game refers to it, transforms into his car zone. Jesus fucking Christ. Anyways, as he does so, as long as he doesn't hit obstacles, he will continuously gain speed until it tops out at nearly four times his base speed. Perfect play is heavily rewarded, because a good start can lead to a complete joke of a final lap, with you lapping potentially the entire race. On the contrary, a few mistakes can completely fuck you for the rest of the race, since first place is most likely untouchable at that point. There are also items you can find in garbage bags like knives and piles of shit that you can drop to take your opponent's acceleration down to zero. And you can carry three items at once. So find whoever's in front of you and go nuts. Furthermore, in between races you get points to upgrade your car Sona based on the place you got, making the game slightly easier in the later levels. The biggest flaw is the map design. The other racers can make it a clusterfuck and the navigation can be confusing as shit. It's not too bad, I beat the whole thing on one clean run the first time I played it, so it's obviously not a huge problem, but the map design is not linear in the slightest, and you can expect to get lost in some of the levels. Other than that though, this game is far better than what it deserves to be. Even if someone at Adult Swim likes cars a bit too much, don't worry, I don't judge. But why can't metal break metal? Like, what? This is IRL? It's a fucking video game, okay? I should be able to fucking build wherever I fucking want! There's not much to say about this one either, but this one isn't too good. Your goal is to just drop down as far as you can until you die while killing everything in your path. Or at least trying to. Because for some reason the game moves at Mac fucking 10. 
Seriously, this isn't sped up at all. The game expects you to hit things the size of an ant while moving at the speed of fucking light. The sword is totally useless, and you run out of ammunition too fast for it to be viable. Also, to make things worse, the enemies hit you just by touching you, so you'll be eating hits trying to kill them, even though they're, they pretty much all take one hit to kill. And you thought that was it? No, here's what the game really looks like. Next! Other than one other game on this list, this is probably Adult Swim's most famous Flash game they've ever released. For good reason, too. It's a Metroid spin-off game where you, the space dog Laika, land on a factory planet to try to rescue all the puppies from there before they die. Instead of being a side-scrolling shooter, however, it's a puzzle game. You have a laser that swaps whatever object that it hits with your current position. This leads to some pretty complex and interesting mechanics that I can see being a wet dream for puzzle aficionados. But unfortunately, all the previous games sort of melted my brain to the point where I couldn't do any of them past the first few areas. Fun game though. If you like puzzles, play this one. It's a shame I couldn't talk about it more. Perhaps I can drown out their childish games with a little TV. You're watching the Old Black Cox channel. Okay, this is where I saved all the best games, because the ones coming up are really fucking good. And to start that off, Cardboard Box Assembler. It's a 2.5D platform puzzle game revolving around Melvin the Box Assembler, who gets transported to the box dimension, I guess, I don't really know. First off, big fucking points for the intro. Reminds me of the intros of like SMT or some shit. It's golden. Secondly, the art style for this game is really nice. Like seriously, this was made in Flash in 2012. This has more production value than most games on Steam in 2021. Make it stop! The gameplay is great. Your goal in every level is to find the key, get the key, find the exit, and escape. All while grabbing crystals and doing it as fast as possible to beat the par time. To do this, however, you don't need to fight enemies. You don't fall down bottomless pits. You fight the third dimension itself. Based on how you fall into a side of the cube, you'll appear and land on a different platform. To make it to the end, you have to navigate these holes and hallways like a maze to reach it properly. And heads up, it gets ridiculous as soon as the end of the first world hits. So good luck getting to the end. And if you like speedrunning, this game is primed, set, and ready to be ran. Set with its own timer and quick level progression like Super Meat Boy. It's a shame that this one is only restricted to new grounds, because this one would be an excellent standalone game, even without an engine overhaul. And it would be the one I would buy outright. That's how much I like this game. Seriously, play this even if you don't particularly like puzzle games. It's really a great game, and one of the best on this list. Any last words before I eat you? Sparkle, I'm glad to hear you're still black. And thanks for two months of support, man. That's a lot of money, I guess, for a person of color. This one is my personal favorite on this list, at least on a conceptual level, so expect a whole lot of bias out of this one. Cream Wolf is another 8-bit reject game. You play as a werewolf set up to devour the kids no, no, of nearby no, no, towns. No. <laughs> Instead of hunting them, however, he has a better idea, and it involves lots and lots of ice cream. Despite the pixelated graphics, I'd say this is the most fucked up of the games, even more so than a Hot Throttle. To play the game, you have to play through three separate minigames. The first is similar to Pac-Man, where you drive along the road playing your tune to attract kids while picking up more cones and avoiding other vehicles. These must be British streets, everyone is on the wrong side of the road. When children start ordering ice cream, you switch to a timing minigame where you have to use Z, X, and C to drop ingredients onto the cones to give to them. For free, obviously. This makes the kids fat and loyal to you. They will follow your siren song no matter where you go. This leads to your final minigame, where you roam around town at midnight on the full moon having all the fat kids follow your truck wanting ice cream at midnight. Where are your parents? You bring them to your mud hut that's always to the west of whatever town you're attacking somehow. You touch your face in front of your doorstep, and then... Yeah, that's what you call metal. Then you make the body parts into funny ice creams. Brain freeze, Neapolitan, chocolate ham. This will make more kids spawn who wear different color shirts. That's how you know what flavor they like. Why do you think I always wear a skin color shirt? Actually, don't answer that. The controls are tight, and the game loop is fun. The music is fucking cool as shit, especially with the layering audio when you play the chime. 
It's great. No problems here. Is what I want to say. Because, well, you remember how I said this was conceptually my favorite game? Well, that's because the Newgrounds port has a severe flaw in the game. When you start level 3, the game skips the intro that normally tells you how much time you have and just starts up the level without you spawned in, pretty much leaving the game soft locked. I tried three separate times to get past this, nothing. So if you could find a version of this game without that bug, do yourself a favor, a flavor, and play this one. Ever wanted to be a pizza boy? Ever wanted to play a game where you're a pizza boy? No? Well, too bad, because this one's excellent. Like, seriously, this game has more shit to do than Watch Dogs Legion. Well, bye. And this is eight years older and doesn't get its source code leaked. All you do in this game is pick up pizza orders, deliver them, drive back, buy gas, repeat. That's it. But the execution is so great that it turns it completely on its head. You have no restrictions on how you traverse the town. Go through alleys, drive through grass, run morons over. Just don't ruin the pizzas, you fucking idiot. Oh my god. And don't get caught by cops either. Run too many dickheads over and you'll start getting chased down by law enforcement. Get caught, get fined, and lose some job security. Don't worry though, Joe doesn't think you're a convict. Those five people didn't matter, they were workplace casualties. It's okay, just get promoted and deliver a few pizzas, you'll be fine. Beyond that though, you can also just drive around the city collecting loose change, nitro boosters, and various mission items to trade for more money at certain locations. Like the dice at the game store or the candy for the six-year-old child slave at Monster Corp. Hey, the paywall, what can I say? Also, if you don't want to deliver pizzas for a living, you can also become a professional clown exterminator. Yeah, run over mimes, clowns, or criminals, and you'll get free money for your homicide. I didn't need an incentive to do that, but it's a nice little bonus. Just don't touch Mr. Hot Dog. Dear Lord, don't touch Mr. Hot Dog. So yeah, this game is fucking awesome. It's an 8-bit reject, one of my favorites for sure. And the ones coming up are even better, so let's get to those now. Daddy, would you like some sausage? Daddy, would you like some sausages? Daddy, would you like some sausage? Sausages! Sausages! This one is really misleading in the best way possible. Normally, when you see a game like this on a browser game's website, you expect some sort of management game or something. But not this one. Sausage Factory is actually a rhythm game. Use the A, S, and D keys to smash ingredients to make sausages with. I really like the progression of this game though, with the story, yes there's a story, being told through memos from your supervisor or manager, gradually making more budget cuts, equipment changes, ingredient, uh, let's call them liberties, and efficiency tweaks, ultimately affecting your job as the sausage maker. You gradually have to work faster and smarter to meet your quota, represented by your score, with bonuses and penalties being given at the end of each day to make your job easier or even harder. To meet these quotas, you need to be on your toes. Remain on beat, get large combos, be accurate, and don't waste resources. I managed to beat this game on my first recording session, but I had already tested the game twice before I recorded, and I didn't even play on hard mode. This game is very hectic. However, it is one of the most involved games on this list, the most replayable, and is the best of the 8-bit rejects. The only game I can even consider beating it is... This is it, the big motherfucker of the collection. Amateur Surgeon is the game that broke the mold and ended up being a huge hit it deserves to be. You play as Alan Probe, a pizza boy, out delivering pizzas as he runs over Dr. Ignatius Bleed, a disgraced doctor who had his practicing rights relieved years before. Out of desperation to keep his job, Alan performs an emergency surgery on Ignatius to try to save him, using various tools like a pizza cutter, matches, and a stapler. He succeeds, and the two of them start an underground surgery operation for the seedy characters of the slums. My headcanon is that Alan Probe is the dude you play as in Pizza City, and acts as sort of a prequel. I don't know, I think it's funny. Needless to say, this is a surgery game, but this one is specifically a spoof of Atlas's Trauma Center series, one of the highest regarded games on both the DS and Wii, giving this game a huge bar to jump over if it wants to stand a chance. Surprisingly, it does. Most of the tools are cruder versions of the tools in Trauma Center, the stapler being the suture, pizza cutter as a scalpel, matches to cauterize, etc. There are two new tools, however. The chainsaw is used to remove large organs like rib cages and lungs, and the car battery is used to revive the patient as well as kill bugs when operating. Each operation is vastly different, and you can tell exactly what you're up against just from looking at the character. 
You start out very simple, learning the basic method of closing wounds, healing the patient, stopping bleeding, and extracting things from the patients. Then gradually move on to more unique and strange situations. Like a dude microchip to the brim where you blow up his chips and douse the subsequent fire with the guy's blood. Or the freak who's totally infested with ants, to the point where they have built colonies inside of his heart. All while learning about Dr. Bleed's previous exploits. Unfortunately, much like Cream Wolf, the first chapter is the only one that's playable. If you remember the beginning of this video, Adult Swim has updated their website to list their newer games, and with that, they deleted all their former games they made using Flash. This included the full version of Amateur Surgeon, that they made only playable via their website. The majority of this game is totally lost to time. Just when it was getting good too. The point they stopped the game at would be like if Trauma Center's second opinion just stopped working as soon as you finished the first guilt surgery. Uh, you know all the games I said deserved a full purchase? Well, this one actually got it. Several actually, as far as I know. There were four games released on iOS and Android. Whether they're still up or contain the full version of this game is beyond my knowledge, but if this looks interesting, that would probably be your best avenue to play it. Just blue stacks it or something, because mobile controls would probably make your hands vanish from existence by the end of the day. Speaking of which, that's my only real complaint to this game. It, do it doesn't even have to do with the game itself. But this game wreaks havoc on your wrist. Like, do not play this game for more than 30 minutes at a time, at most, because this will make you contract Carpal Tunnel. But needless to say, this is a classic of Flash games, and if you haven't, you should definitely play it any way you can. So at the end of the day, what do I think of the Adult Swim collection? Well, I certainly had fonder memories of a lot of these games. Some lived up to it, others didn't at all, and a few even surpassed it. But overall, they were fun, intriguing, disturbing, and some batshit insane. Adult Swim, however, has truly outshined their earlier years with games like Volgar the Viking, Rain World, and Duck Game, letting them show their skills for making games. Do I support the fact that they want these games to remain lost in time? No, not at all. But what they've done beyond these has been even better. So at least we can be happy that this older mixed bag has built up to something much more than what's being left behind. If you've watched this far, I want to thank you for bearing with me this long through the whole thing. I wanted to try something different, and hopefully it was at least enjoyable to watch all the way through. I also want to point you towards some more content you might like, like my friends Martzpan Frosty and Coda, where you can find both all the stupid shit the three of us do in our spare time, as well as the stuff that they like to work on and post in their spare time, both of which I couldn't recommend more. And if you want more content like this, I'd recommend you check out Running Shine, who was very influential on the making of this video and an excellent creator regardless. Finally, if you want to see some excellent playthroughs of other games I enjoy, watch Spasmatic Bananas videos. Like seriously, almost every single game he plays are also part of my favorites, and him and Slushy Soda are hilarious to boot, so it could be a higher recommendation. Anyways, hope you enjoyed, and hopefully I'll see you again in the next one.